phase one can start as soon as possible after the injury really the aim is to help protect the injury and to help promote the healing um, as soon as possible in terms of treatment methods for a, a, an early groin strain the first thing to do is to make sure that you rest and offload it and really important that you don't stretch it you compress it if you can with some taping and then you ice it um, in phase two it's important that you continue with the treatment modalities that you started in phase one so ice compress and rest it from um, overloading activities alongside that we can now start doing some strengthening work for the groin itself the isometric ball squeezes you start off with a ball between your knees you want to squeeze your knees together against the ball at around 50 to 70 percent of your maximum voluntary effort and it should be pain free if it's not pain free take the percentage down and the amount of effort you're putting into it down to around 30 40 percent it's a really good exercise to a strengthen the groin but b use as a gauge as to how well your groin is improving some of the other exercises start bringing in movement based isotonic type exercises so things like adductor drags are really useful to start getting a little bit of strength into the area in phase three what we're really looking to do is to actually strengthen the uh, adductor or groin muscles we use a combination of isometric which is where there is no movement of the muscle it's just being put under tension then we are also using a kind of heavy resistance to strengthen it and we're also using some functional strengthening work in terms of uh, things like squats and um, RDLs. It's really important that you use all the as different aspects of the strengthening program because we want to strengthen the groin in different types of ways using different types of exercises. So it is really important that you do all of the exercises on there, not just the, the two or three that look the easiest. Stage four, groin rehabilitation. Uh, basically, this is to continue to improve the strength of your groin muscle, but also to give it a little bit of endurance uh, and expose it to some higher level activities. In terms of the strengthening uh, exercises, again, most of these can be done at home, but if you do have access to a gym, it does make it a little bit easier to put some external load through the groin. And in terms of sort of uh, an adductor drag, you can really sort of load that up in a gym and it's going to help just improve the strength that much quicker. The other thing that we like to do in this stage is add in some plyometrics. Now, plyometrics are basically a fancy word for jumping and explosive type activities. Phase five of groin rehab is the late stage uh, return to training, return to play still continue with all the mobility and activation type exercises and of course the strength and exercises but the main thing here is running progressions it will guide you through and make sure that you've pushed the groin to a high enough intensity to be able to return to sort of training or competition for whatever sport you whatever sport you do really you should by this point be able to run continuously for about 20 minutes um, at a fairly good pace and not feel your groin at all. Phase six is really a maintenance program for the groin. And this is where I see a lot of people go wrong, where they injure their groin, they get it better, they go back, and then they just think everything's gonna be fine. And quite often it's not, because there was a reason why it got injured in the first place. It was either too weak or you asked too much of it, or, or the body just couldn't cope with what you're asking it to do. So it's really important with the groin that you complete a maintenance program really to maintain the strength and then mobility and movement control around your hip and groin complex. Within the maintenance program, there's some dynamic mobility, there's some stretching, there's some strengthening exercises. There's also some activation and functional exercises, which are also really nice to do as well. You don't need to do these all day, every single day. If you can get these done two or three times a week in and around your training, it'd be absolutely brilliant. But genuinely, I think it's important that if you've had a groin strain, you do try and do something to keep on top of it because the last thing you want is to turn one groin strain into multiple groin strains.